Welcome to the Abundant Life in Vancouver, Filipino Seventh-day Adventist churches. We also welcome those who are watching in the homes and faraway places. Praise God for the blessing of technology. Two important announcements. The virtual BC Camp meeting will be held on July 29 to August 1. And the title is Led by the Spirit. The main pavilion speakers are John Paulin, Frank Hassel, Gary Cross, Mark Johnson, and Mike Lennon. The early teen and youth speaker is Steve Fonseca. The Abundant Life Church is going to have its camp out on September 4 to 6 at Camp Hope. Good news from the Adventist world. Our retirement home, Casa Mia, in Italy, has zero COVID-19 cases or deaths of clients and healthcare workers due to the God's protection and the prompt action of the management. Now we are going to hear again another powerful message from our Pastor Liumar Makaraeg. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 122, verse 1, says, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. The universe is your house. We are your the sheep of your pasture. We thank you for the blessing that you give us every Sabbath day. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bless our pastor as he gives the message to us. We pray for those who are sick. We ask all these things, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, 
We just bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our Creator, our Redeemer, we humble ourselves to you this Holy Sabbath day. We thank you, Father, that you gather us virtually to give you praise and thanksgiving. Thank you for protecting us every day so that we can continue to work and provide for our family. Thank you, God, for sustaining us every day. I lift up to you, our brothers and sisters, who are sick. May you continue to touch them and heal them, O Lord. May you bless this tithes and offering for the Sabbath day. Help this offering to use for the furtherance of your service. I pray that you bless Pastor Leo Marmakarae as he will go in to share your holy words to us. Forgive us, O Lord, for all our iniquities. Cleanse our hearts and minds so that we are worthy to receive your message this morning. We ask in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Our offering today goes to the women's ministry. Despite our uh, situation today, we would like to encourage everyone to please continue sending your tithes and offerings to your respective churches through online giving. Go to your website, Vancouver Filipino SDA Church or Abundant Life SDA Church, Surrey. Make sure you include Surrey as there are other churches named Abundant Life. Once you are on your website, click on the online giving then follow the instructions. We find it very convenient to do online giving. We have been doing it since 2011. As the, at the end of the year, we review the total tithes and offerings we have sent for our guide for the year. Any questions on online giving? Ask your respective treasurers, Roger McSalim, for Vancouver Filipino and Luningning Waro for Abundant Life Church. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our most wonderful and awesome God, thank you for giving us sincere hearts to return to you 10% of your blessings and more of those blessings for the furtherance of your work and for the expenses of our local churches like rent and ministries so that your gospel will be spread all over the world thank you for blessing our tithes and offerings in jesus name amen Until we give you first place, until we let you begin to fill us with your spirit, renew us from within. Nothing matters, nothing's gained without your holy presence. Our lives are lived in
heart was broken because you saw the need, because you gave so freely, because of Calvary. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Thank you, uh, Sister Sharon, for that beautiful message and song. Praise the Lord for that. Again, welcome, uh, Vancouver Filipino and Abundant Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. I hope and pray that uh, we are all going to receive the blessings of God this day as we listen to His Word. We all know that many people today are you know afraid and uh, agitated because of what is going on in the world today many people are scared and uh, they really don't know what the future holds uh, for them but every time i read the bible uh, god through the holy spirit uh, told us that uh, god will have a victory over all these uh, events in the world, even over the enemy, over uh, death, over sickness. God will have uh, victory over all these things. And this gives me assurance that uh, I will experience someday a place where there will be no more sorrow or pain. So let's take a look because uh, here in the Word of God, we have the sure word of prophecy. Last night, I shared with you about the effort of Satan to attack and destroy us. But praise the Lord, the, the, the blood of the Lamb, and the word of testimony and uh, we decided not to love our lives even when faced death. These are the key uh, ingredients to overcome him in the last days. Because you know, Satan is at war with us because we have eternal life. We keep the commandments of God 
and uh, we also keep the faith of Jesus. We have the uh, testimony of Jesus Christ. So today, this is the continuation of the message last night. So let us take a look at the Bible and uh, let us see what the Bible tells us about what God can do in the near future. Let's take a look at uh, Zion, Isaiah chapter 46, Isaiah 46, uh, 9 and 10. I'll be reading from uh, New International Version. Remember the former things, those of long ago, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is, is still to come. Praise the Lord. God will tell us what is, is still to come. He will make known to us what is, is still to come. Because according to Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, He is God and there is none like Him. And He makes known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is, is still to come. So if God can do that or able to do that for us, then let us read from the Word of God what is this plan of God for us in the future. And that is why the topic uh, for this study is about the sure word of prophecy. So yes, we have a God that can, you know, show the future for His people. Again, you know, God used ordinary people in the Bible, right? Sometimes the shepherds, sometimes, you know, ordinary, ordinary men, uh, ordinary men who became a king, and some are prophets. So let's take a look at Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secret to His servants, the prophets. In other translation, unless He reveals His plan to His servants, the prophets. So you will see here, uh, if God is able to reveal the future, He will use many means and one according to this passage is this uh, he will use prophets to reveal his secrets and he the bible called this servant or this prophet as his servants they are the servants of the lord so let's take a look again numbers 12 verse 6 okay and he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. So these, I think, are the ways that God can or could use to reveal his plan, not only his plan, but himself, okay, to his servants, the prophets, through a vision, and he will also speak to him in a dream. As you can see here, uh, when we look at the Bible and try to understand the will of God for us, you will find out that the prophecy of the scriptures is not a man-made prophecy or man-made interpretation. You, if you are, you know, familiar with your Bible, you would always see that uh, the Lord reveals to them what He wants to do with His people in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, when Jesus Christ, you know, was about to be crucified. He discussed some important things in Matthew chapter 24 about the last days. And even uh, Paul mentioned about the coming of Jesus Christ. 
And the book of Revelation talks about the uh, coming events in the last days. So these are the revealed plan or will of God for each and every one of us. But we have the assurance that the interpretation of this prophecy is not man-made. It is not devised by a human mind. But rather, according to the Bible in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, and I will read from King James' uh, Isery the Bible, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereto you do well that you take heed as to a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So in here, we have this sure word of prophecy. And uh, Apostle Peter says, uh, you need to pay attention to that, as to a light that shines in a dark place. Meaning, this sure word of prophecy will guide us, okay, uh, in a dark place. As if this is a light that will guide us in a dark place. This is a sure word of prophecy. Now, verse 20 says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit so again the uh, meaning and interpretation of the sure word of prophecy is not according to the Bible of any private interpretation. But these holy men of God spoke as they were moved, or in other translation, carried along by the Holy Spirit. They were guided. They were moved. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit. That is why it is called the sure word of prophecy. Now let's take a look at the other uh, text here in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. So again, this is the continuation of our message last night. Okay, Revelation 19, verse 10. And I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now the testimony of Jesus, as you look back in Revelation you know, chapter 12, you will see here in your Bible, it says there, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, verse 11, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives to the death. Since they have this testimony of Jesus, these people were willing to share this testimony. And as they shared this testimony of Jesus, it became their testimony okay, about Jesus. So as you can see here, while we are uh, sharing our experience with Jesus, we are telling to the world that we are His servants and we are His people. So and that is why He said for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy here in the book of Revelation 19 verse 10. So it's about the prophecy of Jesus or the prophecy about Jesus Christ here in the book of Revelation. It is, well, Revelation 1, 1 says the revelation of Jesus. It is the revelation of Jesus okay, or about Jesus that he shows to his servants 
John, but will take place in the near future. So the book of Revelation are the revealed events of Jesus Christ about the near future. And if we follow these events, uh, Peter said this is a sure word of prophecy. Okay? And because we are part of the remnant church, we have this spirit of prophecy. So let's take a look at Revelation 12, 17. The dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnants of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So they have the testimony of Jesus Christ or the spirit of prophecy. Okay? So when you take a look at the Bible and open the book of Revelation and open the book of Daniel, you would see there the grand uh, plan of God for all human beings. And God is calling people okay, to prepare them prepare them for the last battle. Now, people, some people would think, what they mean, great battle. When you read the book of Revelation, those who will have victory are on the side of God. And God is calling you to be part of His group of people in the last days. Because their leader, okay, the Lord and Savior and God, conquered death. Uh, Jesus Christ overcame the world. He conquered sin and Hades when he died on the cross and resurrected on the third day. So their leader is a conqueror. But God is calling you and me to be part of that group that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ or the spirit of prophecy. Now let's take a look once again. And Isaiah 54, verse 5. Uh, For your maker is your husband. Why we uh, discuss this one? Because in Revelation 12, 17 says, The dragon was angry with a woman. Now, who is the woman? I mentioned last night that the woman represents what? The church. But where is the biblical evidence for that? Now, I'll give you the biblical evidence. Isaiah 54, verse 5, and I'll be reading from New King James Version. For your maker is your husband. He was talking to the people of God. Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. So, if the maker is the husband, then God's people represents the bride, the church, the woman. Okay? There's another passage in Jeremiah 3.14. Return of backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Again, this represents the woman because the Bible says, For I am married to you. God's people represents the bride or the woman. There's another passage in Isaiah chapter 2, 19 and 20. This is from New Revised Standard uh, Version. And I will take you for my wife forever. I will take you for my wife in righteousness. And in justice, in steadfast love, and in mercy, I will take you for my wife in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. So once again, God's people in the Old Testament represents what? The bride, the woman. Okay? So, another passage now in the New Testament in Second Corinthians 11 verse 2. Uh, I'll be reading from New International Version. I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might 
present you as a pure virgin to Him. So again, the Corinthians believers, according to Paul, he uh, said that, I quote, I promised you to one husband. So the believers in Christian era, again, the same in the Old Testament, continuation of God's people, they were present as a woman, the church. Another passage in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present to her himself a radiant church without a stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. So husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Now, look at the statement of Paul in verse 32. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. So, yes, when you go back to uh, the book of Revelation, okay, chapter 12, verse 17, the dragon was angry with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the woman in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, represents the church. And the church, according to this passage, has a group of people, remnant, called remnant, the remnants of her seed. And it was identified here, who are those people? They are the people, according to this passage, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord that I am now part of God's remnant church. Praise the Lord that my brethren, my brothers and sisters are part of God's remnant church. Now in the New Testament, who, who built this church? It is none other than Jesus Christ. Okay? Let us take a look in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and you will see there the statement of Jesus Christ Matthew chapter 16 beginning from verse 15 he says to them let's start with uh, verse 13 when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He says to them, but whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say to you, and I say also to you, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, the one who established the church is none other than Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Okay? It is his body, it is his church. In the New Testament. And we are part of God's uh, remnant church. 
in the New Testament. How about the church in the Old Testament? Again, here in the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 38, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spoke to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give to us. So the church in the Old Testament is called the church in the wilderness. Who established the church? The church? It is God from the very beginning. Okay? So when we look at the church, the first church is in the Garden of Eden. And then the family of Noah. And then the family of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob. And then Joseph. And then God's people. Right? And God established them in the land of promise. Okay, he led Joshua to lead them into the land of promise. But Joshua died. Okay? There in God established judges during the time for God's people. And after that, you know, God's people asked for a king. And they chose Saul, the first king. And then David. And then God established his kingdom with David. And then after that, as you can see, because of the sin of King David, okay, God said, I will divide your kingdom. Okay? And then God, in, uh, Solomon inherited the kingdom of David. But after Solomon, the kingdom was divided into two, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. But God's people, you know, they were rebelling against God. So God, because of his mercy, love, God uh, sent them what? Prophets to tell them what to do, that they need to repent of their sin. But they rejected the prophets of God. But in the Old Testament, you know, they were called church in the wilderness. And then Jesus Christ came. And then, again, he said, I will build my church composed of Jew and Gentiles. And we are part of that remnant church of God because we keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So you can see here in... Uh, In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32, uh, Paul used this relationship of husband and wife and then Christ to his church. And that's why he said, this is a profound mystery. But I am talking about Christ and the church. And we are part of this church. We are the true church of God. What is the other sure word of prophecy that you can see here in the book of Revelation chapter 12? Revelation chapter 12. Let's open our Bible to Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Look at what happened here. Verse 11. They overcame me him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives on uh, lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, what did he do? He persecuted the woman. He persecuted the church which brought forth the man-child. So if the church represents God's people, when you look at your Bible, in the book of Romans, okay, let's take, open your Bible to the book of Romans, and you will see here some important truth in the book of Romans. Okay. 
Okay? Romans chapter 9. I say the truth in Christ Jesus, I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are what? Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and, whom, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is all, who is over all God, blessed forever. Amen. So, you see, the people of God, the Israelites, according to verse 5, uh, came, Christ. Okay? So, when you go back again to Revelation chapter 12, you will see here, Revelation 12, then the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, the church, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman, or the church, were given two wings of great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. So the word here in verse 13, here in King James, uh, is a read. He persecuted the woman. As you all know, in our church history, the woman fled and used wilderness to continue the worship of the true God. And here, uh, the time was mentioned in verse 14, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Okay, we will go back again later on this topic because I'd like to share now about the sure word of prophecy. This half a time, uh, a time and times and half a time from 538 to 1798 of persecution. Okay, those of you who knows this one will understand. But after that 7 and 1798, okay, verse 17 the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, meaning the remnant of the woman, the true church, will emerge after 1798. In the context of Revelation, God says, prophesy again to many people, tongues and language. So as you can see here, and that is why I have this a solid assurance that Jesus Christ is in control, not only of the affairs of the world, but also of the affairs of the church. Because He is the head of the body. He is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the church. And He established His church. And I praise God because He will sustain this church until the end of time because he said he said and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it praise the Lord my dear brothers and sisters you and I are members of this remnant church so don't be sad it, the whole world is against you because you are in the true church. And that is why uh, the Bible is calling his people you know, to help each other and love one another because in the world, they cannot help us and love us because we are not part of the world. We are not worldly people. We are destined to heavenly kingdom. You are distinct for that. I would like to encourage you to stay and remain, to remain uh, faithful in the church because this is God's church. Let's have a word of prayer. Our heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful truth that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. 
Thank you that you bring us in this remnant church to uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to other people. Help us to love one another always, Heavenly Father, and serve one another in uh, perfect unity of love. Bless us all this day, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all, my dear brothers and sisters.